This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, students, and Dr. Divya. So now we are in the fifth chapter. Principles of inheritance and variation. So we have learned about different concept of this chapter, like what is genetics, then principles of inheritance, and different mode of inheritance. Everything we have learned. So Mendel proposed these principles of inheritance, and those proposed ones today, they are called as Mendel's law of inheritance. Those proposals are called as Mendel's law of inheritance, right? So he proposed that. the factors those factors are regulating the characters and they are found in pairs the pairs are called as alleles so he observed that the expression of the characters expression of those characters in the offspring that follow in a definite pattern that means it is different in first generation or f1 generation and different in second generation and it will continue as such like there will be more variations in each generation so some characters are dominant over other characters okay so the dominant characters are expressed when factors are in heterozygous condition the dominant characters are expressed when that factors are in heterozygous condition that means if it is not in homozygous condition also or even in the presence of one dominant allele that character is expressed that was proposed as law of dominance okay even at the presence of one allele that is showing that dominant character and the recessive characters are only expressed in homozygous condition okay recessive characters whenever the recessive character is present that when it is in heterozygous condition that won't show the expression or that won't be expressive when it is coming in homozygous condition the recessive character will be expressed so these characters will never blend in heterozygous condition okay a recessive character that was not expressed in heterozygous condition that but that may be expressed again when it comes in homozygous condition okay even at heterozygous condition the presence of recessive allele will be there but it won't get expressed the dominant allele only will get that expression but when it is coming in further generation when it is coming in homozygous condition it will get expressed okay so that recessive character that was not expressed in heterozygous condition that may get the expression again when it becomes homozygous okay hence these characters segregate while formation of gametes that's the important point when gamete formation is happening that time the segregation these characters are segregating and that forms the gametes this is called the law of segregation the so law of dominance means it will get that dominant expression even though at the presence of single allele also the dominant allele will get the dominant character expression even it is not in homozygous condition or both alleles are not same both from both are not from the dominant allele even though they will show the expression of that dominant character okay but the recessive character will get the expression only if that is in recessive homozygous condition only if both alleles are present in recessive condition then only it will show the expression of that recessive character so not all characters show the true dominant complete dominance the dominant but some characters dominant effect won't be complete it is in an incomplete state and uh, some some of them may show co dominance means if there are more than one allele dominant allele for a character both will express co dominance along with one allele another one also will get expressed so when mendel studied this inheritance of two characters together he found that all the factors they were they were having independent assortment means they are not depending upon the another one for the assortment or and combined in all permutation and 
combinations, right? Mendel tried with the support of all these mathematical expressions or formulas, he made a very good research in the inheritance of characters. So with all combinations, there, and he found that in all possible combinations, this chromosome segregation or the segregation of these factors, it is working on, right? Then we learn to express with the help of Punnett square and these two factors which are mentioned by Mendel that now it is called as genes. Okay, so the factors, the genes, they are present on chromosomes and these are regulating the characters and these are called as genotype. The characters, the genes which are regulating the characters, they are called as genotype. And the physical expression of such genotype that is called as or such genotype or such characters that character which is expressed that is called as phenotype that expressed character is called as phenotype okay so up to that they were in a confusion about the location of this gene after knowing the location of this gene like the genes are located on chromosomes they found a good relation or correlate, they, they were able to correlate the laws which are proposed by Mendel, okay. So they correlated between Mendel's law and the segregation and assortment. Then that segregation and the assortment of chromosome during meiosis, that they learned, okay. So now we will start with our today's topic. So up to this, we have learned in the last class. In the last class, we were gone through all these topics. So now we will learn about, first we will learn about cytoplasmic inheritance. Okay. So first, the cytoplasmic inheritance that is discovered by Collins. Corrins, uh, he was a scientist who discovered the cytoplasmic inheritance. So what do you mean by the cytoplasmic inheritance? Or do you have any idea about the cytoplasmic inheritance? From the term you can make out, it's from the cytoplasm, right? That inheritance from the cytoplasm. So inheritance of characters which are controlled by cytoplasm or the cytogenes, it is called as cytoplasmic inheritance. What is cytoplasmic inheritance? Inheritance of characters which are controlled by cytoplasm or cytogene. That is called as cytoplasmic inheritance. The characters which are controlled by cytoplasm or cytogene. That is called as cytoplasmic inheritance. Okay. So what is cytogene? What do you mean by cytogene? Genes which are present in cytoplasm, they are called as cytogene. Cytogene or plasma gene, what is that? Or extra nuclear gene. See, what we have learned, genes are present on chromosomes. Chromosomes. These chromosomes where it is present, normally we will tell inside nucleus, chromosomes are present, right? But here, this character will be inherited from the male gamete and female gamete. All the characters will come to the offspring, right? That is the main concept. So here, cytogene or plasma gene or extra nuclear gene which is not from inside the nucleus extra nuclear outside the nucleus or from the cyto cytogene from the cytoplasm okay so the genes which are present in cytoplasm they are called as cytogene or plasma gene or extra nuclear gene genes which are present in cytoplasm they are called as cytogene or otherwise it is called as plasma gene or extra nuclear gene. 
So these genes controlling cytoplasmic inheritance. They are called as plasma genes. No doubt this. You may get for neat question. What are plasma genes? Don't get confused. Okay. What you can write? The genes controlling cytoplasmic inheritance. They are commonly called as plasma genes. So the total genes present in the cytoplasm. It is called as plasmon. What is plasmon? The total gene present in the cytoplasm. The total cytogenes, cytogenes or cytoplasmic genes present in cytoplasm, it is called as plasmon. Okay. So the genes which are present in the nucleus, here in cytoplasm, it is called as plasmons. Plasmon. But here, genes which are present in the nucleus, in the nucleus it is called as Karyum, karyogen, sorry, karyogen. Why karyogen? Karyo, that word is related to nucleus. So what is karyogen? Gene which is located in the nucleus. Here, this one I explained. That, that is called as karyogen. Karyogen means it's the gene which is located in the nucleus. Within, in cytoplasm, it is called as Cytogene. So the total cytogene present in the cytoplasm is called as plasmon. So the genes which are present in the nucleus, it is called as karyogen. From the term, this term, karyo, that word is related to nucleus. So you can make out easily. So cytogene inheritance that occurs only through female. See here we have mentioned. Inheritance of cytogene only, it occurs only through female. It occurs only through female. Why? What will be the reason for that? What will be the reason for that type of inheritance? That inheritance occurs only through female. Why it is not getting inherited from male? Because you know that these plasma genes occurs in plastid, mitochondria, plasmids. And some special particles like uh, sigma particles, sigma particles, then kappa particles, all these. Okay, cytoplasmic inheritance usually they will occur from these things. So in a higher organism, this cytoplasmic inheritance is also called as maternal inheritance. Okay, maternal from female or from mother. In higher organism, it is called as maternal inheritance. Because the zygote, you know that the zygote receives most of the cytoplasm from where? From ovum. Zygote is receiving here one egg and one sperm. Just to understand, I'm drawing the structure. One egg here. You have learned the structure of sperm, microsomes, cysts, and all. So when egg and sperm both are joining means here when a sperm is reaching egg, that releases only that nucleus. Only that nucleus is getting released here. Here this nucleus, only this nucleus is coming here and the fusion is taking place. Right? Along with limited amount of cytoplasm. Or we can say that the amount of cytoplasm is very less or nil. Like that only we can calculate. So like that, the cytoplasm is retained by the female gamete only. From the female gamete, the cytoplasm is getting inherited. And the female male gamete only, the nuclear fusion is taking place. Right? Nuclear the nucleus is getting released from the male gamete and it is getting fused. Right? So, in higher organism, cytoplasmic inheritance is also called as maternal inheritance. It is called as maternal inheritance because that zygote receives most of the cytoplasm from ova. 
okay so you know organism form a male gamete and a female gamete right it is forming male gamete and a female gamete so during sexual reproduction for example in human just now i said in human the egg will receive the nucleus of the male gamete and there will be a little amount of cytoplasm but during fusion or the zygote formation the sperm or the male gamete releases that nucleus only and these nucleus is getting fused with the egg here here we explain that nucleus only nuclear fusion from the for nuclear fusion from the male gamete that egg is re, uh, sperm is releasing nucleus and it is coming inside the egg cell and it is getting fused with the egg nucleus right and only that female gamete retains the cytoplasm here the female gamete is retaining the cytoplasm so mainly that mitochondrial disease and all in all this kind of disease mitochondrial diseases here these are not extra nuclear organelles right like chloroplast mitochondria all these are outside the nucleus it is found in the cytoplasm in a cell we have learned the st structure of a cell so in inside nucleus this won't be present these organelles like mitochondria chloroplast and all where it will be present it will be present in the cytoplasm of the cell so all this mitochondrial diseases that will get inherited from mother only from mother such diseases and all will be father so it, it's easy to find out if uh, some uh, something is having such kind of mitochondrial diseases and all it is very easy to find out because by fusing the egg and sperm only egg egg cell or the ovum that is retaining the cytoplasmic part okay from the male gamete only the nucleus is coming to the egg cell and it is getting fused with the nucleus of egg or the ovum so mitochondria along with mitochondrial dna from the mother's egg cell and that is incorporated into zygote and that is passed to the daughter cells whereas from uh, the cytoplasm from the male cell it is not getting passed to the offspring it is not getting passed like that to the offspring okay so dna from the mother egg cell dna from the egg dna come to the Divya, uh, some volume is not audible. Sound, sound, sorry.
Deepa. Deepa. Hello, Deepa. Yes, ma'am. Ma, cake is a cake. Lana, tell me. Sorry. You are not telling me. Ma, now you are telling me. Ma, 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 you are telling me. So we are not able to hear, not audible. Yeah, no, no. Not able. Can you hear now? Ah, yes, yes. Yes, Divya. Divya. Deepa, what is it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No cake, I'm Sonia Pesa Sula cake. I'm a soling a soling a cake. So, all these mitochondrial diseases they are getting inherited through the cytoplasm, cytoplasm of mother, or the it is called as maternal inheritance. It is getting from the female, not from the male gamut. Clear. Okay, next. Now we are going to see some examples. Examples for cytoplasmic inheritance. Okay, these are the two examples for cytoplasmic inheritance. Plastid inheritance in. Plastid inheritance in Mirabilis. This is the plant. So cytoplasmic inheritance, it is getting inherited from the egg or the female gamete. So this inheritance was first discovered by Correns, which was the study material, this Mirabilis. This is the plant in which he studied the cytoplasmic inheritance. So in Mirabilis, this plant, that branch color or that leaf color, it is decided by the type of plastic present in the leaf cell. Okay. So in that leaf, plastids will be present. Plastids means it is present in the cytoplasm. Where plastids will be present in a cell, not inside the nucleus, it will be present in the cytoplasm. Okay. Plastids will be present in the cytoplasm. So these are examples for cytoplasmic inheritance. It was first discovered by Correns in which material? Mirabilis gelepa. It is in Mirabilis gelepa. So in this plant, he found that the leaf color or the branch color, it is decided by the type of plastid present in the leaf cells. In leaf cell, plastids will be present. In leaf, you can see cells. So many cells will be present. So inside the cell, in the cytoplasm of leaf cell, plastids also will be present. So these plastids, it is which type, depending on that, that leaf color or that branch color is getting decided. Okay. So this is an example for cytoplasmic inheritance. Cytoplasmic inheritance was studied or discovered by Correns in which material he conducted his studies? Mirabilis gelaba. This is the plant. So in Mirabilis plant, the leaf color or the branch color, it is decided by the type of plastid present in the leaf cell. Which type of plastid is present in that leaf cell that decides the leaf color or that branch color. So it is a best example for cytoplasmic inheritance because plastids are present in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay. So if the character is getting inherited means it is a cytoplasmic inheritance. Okay, so the next next example is albinism in plant. 
albinism in plant okay in human beings we have learned about or in uh, animals we know how that albinism or the presence of albinism or how it will get appeared right so in plant the gene of albinism found in chloroplast which one gives color to the leaf and all or mainly to plants chloroplast chloroplast in that that gives the color right so chloroplast that gives green color so this gene of albinism is found in chloroplast that gene is found in the chloroplast chloroplast definitely it is an extra nuclear extra nuclear means outside the nucleus or it is present in the cytoplasm so the gene of albinism in maize it is a lethal gene so the gene which is related to albinism it is found in the chloroplast in plants okay so in maize this gene of albinism is lethal gene lethal what do you mean by lethal gene or what is a lethal gene lethal gene what is that what do you mean by a lethal gene a gene that in some condition like we can tell, uh, tell the conditions like we used to say some homozygous recessive condition just for an example i am saying some cases if it is coming in homozygous recessive condition in such condition that may prevent the development or sometimes that may cause the death of an organism or that the organism or its germ cell that cause the death of the organism or the germ cell so such type of genes are called this lethal genes what is lethal genes in some condition like homozygous recessive condition and all if they are presenting or they, if they are coming in such condition that condition may prevent the development of the organism or sometimes it may cause the death of the organism or death of the germ cells so such condition or such genes it is called as lethal genes what is that lethal genes note down it's very important lethal genes then maize sterility in maize plant maize sterility gene is present in the mitochondria okay in maize plant this is present in the mitochondria mitochondria again it is a it is outside the nucleus or inside the cytoplasm of a cell right if this is a cell we have learned about the structure of a cell here nucleus will be present sorry nucleus will be present and inside that chromosome dna or chromosome something will be present and here all organelles like mitochondria will be present chloroplast will be present okay ribosomes all such things will be present inside the cytoplasm right so in mitochondria the maize sterility gene is present okay in the wheat or in the maize plant the gene of maize sterility gene of maize sterility is present in the mitochondria in which organelle it is present it is present in the mitochondria so if you are crossing a normal male wheat plant with a female normal male plant okay a normal male wheat plant it is crossed with a female wheat plant female wheat plant but this what is the speciality of this female wheat plant that is having a gene of male sterility this female plant is having the gene of male sterility okay female plant is having the gene of male sterility so we are cross, crossing a normal male plant with a a female plant which is having a gene of male sterility then in all coming generation the male becomes sterile okay male will become sterile in the coming generations all male plants will become sterile in the future generations so that is called as male sterility in maize plant so because of a particular gene was present with the female which was inherited by the female so here through the female that male sterility character is getting inherited here crossing a normal male plant see this and all you should not done because you will get application type of questions for your neat exam 
in problems you will get or you may get a chance to apply such theory so note down all these points don't miss any points you will get so many questions in the form of problems from the genetics part okay so a normal male plant is crossing with a female plant and in this what is the condition of that female plant that female plant is having a gene of male sterility so all the coming generations of that female that will become or that uh, they will be having male sterility in the future generation after crossing the future generations will form no in all those they will be having male sterile condition okay the so next now cytoplasmic inheritance part over next we are going to chromosomal theory of inheritance okay chromosomal theory of inheritance so you know mendel published all his work based on all inheritance of characters right but due to several reason those things or those findings remained unrecognized what was the reason or what were the reason till 1900 all these developments which were made by mendel or all these studies made by mendel they remain they remained unrecognized or they didn't get much publicity or no one noticed such discoveries because those times communication was not easy see in nowadays the communication or the publication of such things it's very easy and it is very easy to reach people okay but in those days it was not so easy and the publication now it's very very easy to publish an article in one journal right you can communicate through email all the facilities are there now but in those times in 19 till 1900 those things like communication was not so effective so it was not widely published like that theories or that uh, or what what and all development he made or that that didn't get much publicity that didn't reach to people so then the second point was his concept of genes or factors mendel published them as factors now we modified as genes right so the concept of that factors they were like they were getting some kind of expression they uh, mendel called it as traits and the pair of alleles he explained that that pair of alleles they will not blend with each other and that those things and all that was not accepted by the people or the explanation was not so clear because they found many variations okay and third point was the mendel's approach of using mathematical explanation of this biological phenomena with the help of mathematics he explained right that was not acceptable people were not ready to accept many of the biologists they were against all this because it was not clear it was not acceptable from uh, acceptable by many people so it was not accepted in a very well manner that's why up to 1900 this mendel's law of inheritance didn't get much publicity our people were not ready to accept it in a proper way so finally through mendel's work whatever work mendel did do mendel's work suggested the factors or genes this were discrete units he could not provide any physical proof for the existence of these factors or genes mendel was not able to give any physical proof for the existence of this gene or factors and how it is getting segregated like with the help of this mathematical theories he explained mathematical studies he explained everything with the help of the combinations and all he explained permutation combination with the help of all those things he tried to explain his findings but many of the people many of the scientists they were not ready to accept it in that form they 
were asking for a physical proof but mendel failed in that part he was not able to provide any physical proof or the existing proof okay that's why it was up to 1900 they that more uh, mendel's theory of inheritance that didn't get much publicity okay so in 1900 three scientists debris then corens and von schemar these three scientists independently here debris then corens and shema these three scientists independently rediscovered mendel's result they independently conducted studies and all these three scientists rediscovered same mendel's results only mendel's results and inheritance of characters okay so also by this time in 1900 and all that microscopic studies they were more advanced compared to earlier level it was more advanced so it was easy for them to prove or it was easy for scientists to study the cell division and the inheritance of characters and all see like scientists up to that scientists were not able to carefully observe the cell division and the progressive segregation and all but uh, during this period after 1900 this microscopic studies and all they got advanced so it was easy they were able to give a physical proof for that okay and they call this structures in the nucleus in nucleus some kind of structures were there they call it as chromosomes okay just before they uh, made studies about cell division and they found out there are some bodies inside the nucleus and these are called as chromosome nowadays we are calling it as a chromosome chroma means it's the word is related to color chroma som soma means body so chromosome means colored body okay why they gave that name colored body while staining they can make out these chromosomes so they were able to visualize by staining okay that's why they gave the name chromosome mm -hmm. then in 1902 the chromosome movement during meiosis that had been worked out by which scientists walter certain and theodor bovary in 1902 they conducted studies or they noted the behavior of chromosome and the chromosome movement during meiosis okay walter certain and theodor bovary they noted the behavior of chromosome that was parallel to the behavior of genes we learned during mendel's time itself he proved that the movement of the genes from one generation to another generation and all so the chromosomal movement during meiosis had been worked out by which scientists walter certain and theodor bovary 1902 so walter certain and theodor bovary noted the behavior of these chromosomes and genes they were almost parallel they noted down that they noted down the parallel behavior of chromosomes and genes then by using this chromosome movement they explained mendel's law so that was the proof or there the studies got advanced along with mendel's laws along with those mendel's laws they applied their findings also with the help of this mendel's law uh, with the help of this new finding they gave a new explanation for mendel's law okay then hope you remember the cell division and mitosis and meiosis and all here cell division a cell is having these stages interphase then which and all the phase so uh, which and all the prominent phases of a cell interphase then the complete cell cycle hope you remember all those things one is growing phase g1 phase g2 phase 
then which phase will come cell division okay g1 phase g2 phase then division starts right growth phase 1 and growth phase 2 so hope you remember all the cell division mitosis and meiosis and all so how these chromosomes move during that cell division that's what we need to study already we told that meiosis and mitosis cell division is taking place so how these chromosomes are moving while the division of a cell that is the important point the important thing is genes as well as chromosomes occur in pairs here you can see they are occurring in these genes or chromosomes are occurring in pairs so just now we said genes also occur in pairs right how one gene is having two alleles right so these alleles of a gene that is located on homologous sites of homologous chromosome okay homologous sites of homologous chromosome so during meiosis or during metaphase 1 these two chromosome pair they will get aligned independently okay if you have chromosomes during meiosis or cell division it will get aligned independently at metaphase plate here you can see okay this is metaphase during metaphase these al pairs it will get aligned independently okay so here in this picture you can see four different colors in g1 phase this is the stage in g2 phase it will become this is the doubling or growth phase so it will become double right so here you can see yellow color is there orange color is there red color is the green color these are different chromosomes so meiosis one this is anaphase they got arranged and in meiosis two here you can see again that got separated from this set you can see here and this is here right in germ cells you will get each set one from one pair okay this is the condition of germ cells so in meiosis one here the nuclear envelope you can see here nuclear envelope the centrosomes with centriol pairs then chromatins the chromosome duplicates here chromosome duplication is taking place right and here in prophase one the sister chromatids are formed and tetrads it is in tetrad form in prophase one it is in tetrad form and homologous chromosome pairs and exchange of segments right pairing of homologous to form tetrad that is happening in prophase one then in metaphase one this microtubule that will get attached to kinetochore you can see here microtubule this is for separation right the metaphase plate this is metaphase plate that center portion there the chromosomes will get arranged and the centromere with kinetochore you can see here centromere with kinetochore there the microtubules that will get attached then this homologous chromosomes will get separated during anaphase anaphase is the separation phase metaphase the arrangement of chromosome at the center like metaphase plate in metaphase plate it will get arranged and in anaphase the sister chromatids remain attached here you can see after separation this homologous chromosome separates and the pair of homologous chromosome splits up this, that will get splitter and here sister chromatids that will get attached and homologous chromosome separation is taking place and the pair of homologous chromosome that will split up or it will get separated right so here you can see with the help of these four colors how it is getting separated see here it is double and here from here it is getting arranged in the meta uh, metaphase plate then again it is getting 
split it up you can see in germ cells how it is getting separated okay next is comparison between comparison between the behavior of chromosome and genes we can compare the behavior of chromosome and genes how we can compare this chromosome and gene see here i'm giving column a and column b in both i have given points so in a column they occur in pairs and they segregate at the time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair is transmitted one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete and next point is independent pairs segregate independently of each other right this is coming under column a next in b they occur in pairs that is same in both a and b they occur in pairs then next point is segregate a gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete and next point is one pair segregate independently of another pair okay in this how can we tell that column a i can give two options we need to find out which one is about gene and which one is about chromosome here column a that is about gene how we can make out it is about gene that segregates at the time of first there is no difference they occur in pairs both genes and chromosome they occur in pairs but here next one is segregate at the time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair one of each pair in that pair only one is getting transmitted to a gamete okay at the same time in b the second point is they segregate at gamete formation up to that it's same and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete right so that's about which one that's about chromosome right and the independent pairs segregate independently of each other independent that pairs will get independently to the next generation and they will segregate independently there is no particular combination they will segregate in any way they are in that combination or that segregation is independently of each other and next in b column what they are saying one pair of one pair segregate independently it's not like single here however the combination comes comes also we need to accept there is no difference here one pair segregate in independently there is no single separation okay that independently uh, one pair segregates independently of another pair okay so now we can tell that the first one is about g and the second one is about chromosome okay so they occur in pairs both gene and chromosome they occur in pairs and gene segregate at the time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete one of each pair in that single pair one only one allele is getting transmitted to a gamete and independent pairs segregate independently of each other okay here even chromosome that occurs in pairs and chromosome segregate at gamete formation while formation of gamete they'll get segregate uh and only one of each pair is transmitted to gamete then one pair segregate independently of another pair okay so that is the difference between gene and a chromosome now we can make out this column a is about gene and column b is about chromosome and next
Next is here you can see the possibilities of independent assortment of a chromosome. Here, here you can see one long orange, here short green chromosome, and one yellow and short red chromosome. Here, long orange and short green. Here, long yellow and short red. Okay, so during mitosis or meiosis, during meiosis and in meiosis to anaphase, here you can see how it is forming one, one from this and one green, another from this and another green. Here, one yellow from the, from this and one of that pair red. So in germ cells, you will get in the same way. Here orange and here green, like that two germ cells, then yellow and red, like that another two cells, right? And the second possibility, what is second possibility? Here possibility two is one long orange and short red, like that chromosome and long yellow and short green chromosome at the same pole. Okay, so in meiosis, meiosis 1 anaphase, you can see here. In both meiosis 1 anaphase, anaphase you can see the same way. And in meiosis 2 anaphase, in meiosis 2 anaphase, what you can see again, in the here orange, long orange with the red right and here yellow with green so in germ cells again you can see that in germ cells four germ cells in this color combination got it And next is next what you are going to learn Sutton and Bovary we have already told Sutton and Bovary that they argued that the pairing of separation of a pair of chromosome that would lead to the segregation of a pair of factors right the chromosome separation that will Lead, definitely that will lead to the separation or segregation of genes or factors also. So Sutton united the knowledge of chromosome or the chromosomal segregation with Mendelian principles. Okay. Sutton and Bovary they conducted these studies I said and Sutton they tried to combine these concepts the chromosomal segregation with Mendelian inheritance. Okay. So the chromosomal, that from the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So they need an experimental verification for this theory, chromosomal theory of inheritance. So by Thomas Morgan, Thomas Hun Morgan and his colleague. Okay, Thomas Hun Morgan and his colleague. They led to the discovering the discovery based on what based on what they did the discovery based on the variation that sexual reproduction produced see we know that there is an independent assortment so definitely variations will come in the offspring so based on this thomas and morgan and his colleague they based on all these they study based on the sexual reproduction they studied the variations which are coming and morgan Morgan, they, he tried the proof. He tried for a good proof for this, for his studies. Okay. They need a physical proof. So he conducted his studies in very tiny fruit flies. Hope you know fruit flies. These are the fruit flies. So based on that, he conducted his studies. Morgan conducted his studies in fruit flies. Fruit flies, they are also called as Drosophila melanogaster. Drosophila melanogaster. 
So these were found to be suitable for his studies. What were the reasons? This drosophila can be grown in simple synthetic medium in a laboratory. In a lab, very easily we can grow this drosophila melanogaster. And in complete life cycle, that will take place about two weeks. So the cycle, it will take only two weeks. So it is easy to study for the generation, right? Then a single mating. In a single mating itself, they could produce so many progenies or uh, progeny flies. They can, in a single mating, they can produce many flies and offsprings. And we can make out very easily the male and female flies. It's very easy to distinguish the male fly and the female fly. You can see here, this is the female fly and this is the male fly. Male fly and female fly. Here you can see the black spots. This is present only on male fly. And here you can see the OV posterior or OV positions in the female. So you can see here male and female for, uh, fruit fly. And we can, it is easy to distinguish the male and female. Here black dots, black spots are present on male fly and here you can see the ov position of here in the female in the male uh, sorry in the female fly male fly you can see the black spots okay so it is easy if offspring are so many then also they can very easily identify the male and female fly okay then we can see many type of heredity variation with the help of microscope itself, we can conduct the studies. So, we can find out many type of heredity variation in this drosophila melanogaster. So, in the field of genetics, this was used as a study material for many genetical studies. Because very easy to raise next generation. And if many offsprings are there, then also it is easy to find out the male and female ratio. Or it is easy to find out the male and female organism then in a simple synthetic medium we can grow this that's why all this because of all these reasons this drosophila melanogaster that is having a very big role in the field of genetic studies okay and next we need to learn about linkage it's a broad concept in the next class, we'll be learning about linkage also. I hope it's clear up to this. Is it clear? You have any doubt? No, ma'am. Okay, so in next class, we'll learn about linkage. Okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you.